think we're recording now. Here we go. Mic's on. Don't make that mistake again. Put all the work in and not have a microphone attached to the camera. I wouldn't do that, right? Take two. Okay, what was I going to talk about? Fly my old colors. Shout out to my boy, Bill Public, Brother Bill. Anyway. I'm going to talk about this thing I've been doing lately. I'm putting it all together. There's a bunch of stuff here. I'm just going to explain it uh, in the way that I do it and the way I understand it. So I've been posting these videos on Instagram lately. I'm steering my kettlebell training towards Kettlebell X Protocol, Pavel Tsatsouline's latest book. It's nothing new. The material is old. I mean, the concepts are old, but he's popularizing, which is what he does well old Soviet or just sports science stuff. Why is it called AX? It stands for anti-glycolytic training or what is it? Uh, alactic plus aerobic. Alactic. Look at the camera. I say alactic plus aerobic exercise for type 2X fibers. So it's supposed to be like anaerobic, type 2X, and endurance, air exercise, whatever. Anyway, it's called AX. That's what it's all about. Uh, whoa, what's, what's that supposed to be? What is anaerobic? Right? It's these. It's our short-term energy system. And we're operating without oxygen. Right? We're doing something in a high-intensity burst. So, in the case of this program, they love the single-arm kettlebell swings, and I think that's pretty cool. I'm mixing it. I'm doing some other stuff. Like my my days have become my the main axe days are the single-arm swings as you saw in the Instagram video, banded back squats because kettlebells just aren't heavy enough to, to make your legs stronger and your whole body the same way a squat will. Um, you can load more with a squat and the bands promote, uh, you have to accelerate. You can't just lift the bar, like force equals mass times acceleration. If you have zero acceleration, except just a teensy bit to get past gravity, that's not much force, but if you have to accelerate a, a load like you're jumping uh, the, well the band helps makes you do that because the band gets tighter as you go so you have to exert more force and then the other one is the clean and press uh, with the kettlebell so kettlebell clean and press single arm swing kettlebell and uh, banded back squat yes front squats with kettlebells are hard to do I'm not saying that they're not hard but for my legs and the whole body stuff and, and I prefer banded back squats and box squats. Box squats are good too. Uh, anyway, back to Axe. What is it all about? Anti-glycolytic. Uh, fitness goes in fads, right? We have these trends. Uh, what happened a few years ago? High intensity intervals. It's the only thing you need to do. If you have four minutes a day, you can work out and achieve all your goals in only four minutes. And all you have to do is do this thing that's going to put you on the ground in a seizure, throwing up and sweating and, and, and uh, half dead. All right. It's, it's, it's got its place, but uh, the, the main idea is that you can get your desired training effects of hypertrophy, strength, power, speed, and aerobic endurance, and anaerobic to a point without, or even, yes, without doing that. You don't have to. The problem is a lot of people feel like if they don't exert themselves like that, they think they're not working out, but that's not true. And uh, Ultimate MMA Conditioning by Joel Jameson, uh, he's – outline these protocols that are just it's amazing stuff you don't have to when you leave the gym you should still be able to fight or lift something or run or 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 right you got to be able to do this and you have to be able to recover so anti-glycolytic what's glycolytic well we start burning sugar when we go into these zones of, of uh, intensity and energy expenditure where um, we are feeling that burn so we want to stay below the lactate threshold and you can't actually know your actual lactate threshold without going to a lab and getting on a metabolic cart and wearing the mask and doing the running and getting the blood draws and all that. Just don't fail the talk test, right? If, you can, if you're working out and you can't breathe, then you're probably at your lactate threshold. Like if you're burning and everything hurts and you're like, oh, I can't fill the finish, finish the sentence, then yes, bring it down. So the aerobic training zone will benefit the recovery of anaerobic activity. So if you're doing these high intensity things, you don't need to do the high intensity thing to the point. Well, let's well, see. My, my, my view is uh, 
it's sport based. So if I'm going to do a martial art, uh, I know that there's going to be a, a certain a, a rally that's going to burn a lot of energy. It's going to be explosive, and it's going to be for so many seconds long. It's not going to be for five minutes long, where I have to go full power, right? So the aerobic pathway will help recover from that, and there are anaerobic activities you can do that won't put you in that, so you, or will put you near it or about it, but not kill you doing it. And so that's the idea behind this new method, that this new method, I say it's, it's not new, uh, that um, has been public, that publicized, that's what Pavel's good at, publicizing these cool things. Talk test, technical standards. So why else do we want to stay anti-glycolytic? We don't want to go to uh, muscular failure or technical failure. We want good technique, good power, good speed, good output. Uh, low reps, lots of rest. On the minute, 20 to 40 rounds, one to six reps. Why is it one rep? Well, if you're doing a single, a double hand swing, that's one rep, right? You can't do a single arm swing one rep. It's, you have to do both sides. You know, just train one side, that'd be weird. Uh, why am I bringing this up, though? Um, he acts as the basis for my latest trend. Uh, one of my favorite things is clusters, and this is, it's just clusters all over again, right? The water clusters, uh, sub-max or near-max, depending how you're training, low reps, lots of rest. And the research has shown that with l low volume, high frequency training, like the, what is it, like there's, I don't remember what it was, four days, five days a week of doing the, the volume is equated, but over many days versus doing it all at once. Similar or better training effects. Uh, clusters, same thing. Uh, low volume sets, lots of reps. For example, sets of five at about 60% with 15 seconds of rest for hypertrophy, something like that. Uh, there's a million, there's, you have to experiment with this. And then you do three, bouts of that and then you rest for a minute and then you do it again or my favorite 15 singles at 85 percent with 30 seconds of rest i i started doing that that was a long time ago i used that in a program and that was awesome what gave me the idea was if you're doing clusters you, you've always got fresh reps i mean that's the whole point is that you can focus on doing that thing properly and you're not you're not uh, losing quality of reps so if you do three sets of five at 85 percent like starting strength what, what is your last set and your last bunch of reps look like on each set? You're doing five heavy ones, right? So uh, let's see if I, yeah, so versus time or reps, right? Your first set kind of goes down in quality, and then your next one's a little lower, and then, and then lower. The only problem is sometimes my second and third reps are better than my first, but this gives you practice making your first reps better. Uh, Ten sets of three at 65% with 30 to 60 seconds rest. What's that sound like? So that sounds like dynamic effort. And uh, I, Louis Simmons is right. You need the work capacity. You have to train to train because that right there, I thought that was going to be easy. And I didn't even think of it as dynamic effort when I put it in. I put it in for conditioning in my program as a complement to the other day of the 15 singles. And 10 sets of three at 65% with 30 seconds rest is taxing. I was quite tired after that. And now I liked it because it didn't kill me, but it was like, ooh, I, I can feel that. My heart races up. Um, Breathing hard. Uh, what else here? Clusters. Um, so I'm just bringing in the source information here. Pavel again, greasing the groove. Strength is a skill. He he gave me this cool idea, which I've applied to a bunch of other stuff. Uh, is uh, strength is a skill, right? Christian Thibodeau says the same thing. You you find your max number, for example, pull ups. You find your max pull up. So I, I 15. I could do 15, right? So I would take seven reps, and now just do sets of seven and rest, right? So when I use pull-ups in a, a program or in a session that I'm doing, I'll do five to seven. Occasionally, I'll do 10 if it's program, if I'm doing a different program, but I'll do five to seven reps, and then there'll be rest. So my pull-ups are always good. I'm not going to failure, but I could just do a lot more pull-ups now than when I started. When I started doing pull-ups, I weighed uh, 228 pounds, and I could do one pull up and then I'd have to rest for a, a full minute to do another one. And then I mean, two ways to get better at pull ups lose weight, get stronger, right? So I lost a bunch of weight and just kept practicing.